This week we're back to the interesting stuff, the actual math. And we've drawn our box. The box looks something like this. And now we're going to figure out how to draw a texture onto the box. I'll draw a nice example texture here. I'm just going to put a like a smiley face in the middle because that's the limit of my artistic abilities as we discussed in the previous video. There's the smiley face. So we're going to have a triangle somewhere that must map onto that texture. We have to draw this texture inside this triangle and the triangle has points A, B, and C that define it. So the way we're going to do this is by using texture coordinates. I'm going to assign a coordinate system for this texture. This will be 0, 0, this will be 0, 1, this will be 1, 0, and this will be, no, nope, that'll be 1, 1, and that'll be 1, 0. So it's just like a Cartesian coordinate system. And every point in this Cartesian coordinate system is going to correspond to a texel in the original image. That is a, pix a pixel in the texture. So for example, if I choose this point where the nose should be, which looks to be about 0 0.5, 0 0.5, right smack dab in the middle of the image, there's going to be a texel in the original image that should show up when I try to render that texture coordinate. So then we can render this texture on this triangle by assigning texture coordinates to each point in the triangle. So I'm going to call the texture coordinate for A will be 0, 0. That means this corner of the triangle corresponds to this lower left corner of the texture. And then this one here will give TB and we'll call that 0, 1. So it corresponds to this upper left corner of the original texture. And then TC, we will give TC 1, 0. So that's the texture coordinate for point C, and that will be this. You'll notice, you'll notice that we actually cut the texture in half lengthwise when we do this. Because like I mentioned in the previous videos, we can't uh, draw a square with just a triangle. So this texture is actually going to get cut up and drawn on two separate triangles. That's the way it's typically done. So we're going to have one triangle with these texture coordinates and another triangle with the complementary texture coordinates to draw the entire triangle. So now let's look and see how this texture gets placed onto the triangle. For every point in the triangle, and I'll pick an example point right here smack midway between A and B, it's going to, we have to find its texture coordinate. And then one, once we find that texture coordinate, we can look it up and find the texel that goes with it. So let's do that. I'll call this point one. And its texture coordinate is going to be in between 0, 0 and 0, 1. So the average of those two is 0, 0 0.5. So now let's look that up on this texture coordinate system, and it's going to be about right there. That's point P1 in our original texel coordinate system. And so whatever texel corresponds to this point is going to be drawn on the triangle. Let's do it again for this point over here. This will be point P2. And it's going to have a coordinate of, let's see, maybe is 0 0.5 and 0. And the texture coordinate that corresponds to that is right here, P2. So every interior point on this triangle will have a corresponding point in this texture coordinate system. Now, the video card actually does all this for us. We don't, all we have to do is, is specify these texture coordinates for each vertex. And then the shader, which I will get to later, will do all this interpolation for us and figure out which texel to draw at which point. It will do the linear interpolation. So for this, for this point smack dab in the center of the triangle, it has a texture coordinate that's going to lie, I'll call it P3. And it will lie about here. That'll be P3 right there. Uh, but all that is handled in the shader. Looking up which texel goes to point P3 
is done in the shader and we'll cover that in a later video. So just to nail this point home before we go to the code, I'm going to try and copy my little smiley face or the half of it that will be drawn on this triangle. I'm going to try and copy onto the triangle here. So this is, this is the part of the triangle that goes across this way, across the diagonal. And so you can see that cuts the eye in half. So that'll be like right about there, something like that. And then we have the smiley face, which is mostly in the triangle that we're going to draw. And it goes right past this point P3. So if I try and draw it, it'll look something like that. That is half of the smiley face texture that gets drawn on this triangle. And the other half will be drawn on another triangle that looks that goes off the screen like this. So now we know how texture coordinates work. Let's go make a triangle mesh that has texture coordinates and display a texture with them. So now here we are back at our vector of points, except I've made a little bit of a change. Instead of a vector of vectors, we now have a vector of floats. A vector, as in a, a vertex, was really just three floats. But now we've expanded. We want five floats per vertex. Three of those floats are going to be the position of the vertex. You can see them right here, x, y, and z. And two of them are going to be the texture coordinates, u and v. It's pretty common for you to see texture coordinates written as u and v, which just means x and y. It's the same thing. u is like x, and v is like y. But it disambiguates. When you hear uv, you know that you're talking about a vertex coordinate. So each vertex is going to be five floating point numbers, three positions, and two vertex coordinates, a u and a v. And for now, we're just going to make the u and v match the x and the y in the position. Uh, sometimes you don't want that to happen, for, but for our purposes, we're going to make things real easy and just do a little copy paste, just like this. X and Y become U and V. And now we're going to have a big vertex with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 4 is 20 floating point numbers in it. Go back past our indices. Here we go. We're going to load all that information into the video card. And let's skip to the point where we render it, where we render it. This code is, is had a few changes, I had to turn the diffuse map on and specify which texture to use. I figure since we're making a bunch of boxes, we may as well make something that's in every freaking video game ever, which is a crate. We're going we're to turn all our boxes into crates. And so I specified a crate texture to use, which was loaded at another point in the program. And then we have to tell it about the texture coordinates that we put in this buffer. So there's a new function for that, set text coordinate buffer. And it takes two parameters. First is, this is the, what it wants to know is the initial position of the very first texture coordinate. And if you remember, the first three were x, y, and z, and u, was the first texture coordinate, and that was the third one. So x, y, and z were indexes 0, 1, and 2. So here we want to put index 3. And we want the size in bytes, so we have to multiply 3 times 4 bytes per float. The second parameter, which we didn't see last time, is called the stride. The stride means how many bytes long is, is one vertex. Okay. And we have five floating point values per vertex, five. And each vertex is, how big is it? Here's the size of one float, which is usually four bytes. So you have five times four is 20. So the stride is going to be 20, meaning there are 20 bytes per vertex in this vertex buffer. That's all it needs. That's all this neat. Oh, I also increased the scale so that we can see our box a little bit better. So if we run this, it should work. Otherwise, I'll look like an idiot. There we go. We have our box. It's pretty big now. It's a lot bigger. It's a crate without a back. But uh, just so that you can see what's going on, 
all of these crates over here. I, I applied the same crate texture to all those little green boxes that we made previously in the video. So you can see the crate texture here. So that's about it. We've got some crates in our game now. Congratulations, guys. Our game has crates. We've passed the crate threshold. It's the crate swartz radius. That was an awful joke. So next time we're going to look at how to apply normal maps uh, and Lambertian surfaces. It's going to be really cool. See you next time.